So I've been wanting to do a big board for a long time now, and I figured what better bottle to kick it off with than the Old Forester 1924 that is finally dropping in Pennsylvania. We're gonna give this bottle a full review, stay tuned after the break, and we're gonna talk about it. So the idea of a big board is not anything new. I've watched Top Gear for a long time and I've always really enjoyed how they do stars in a reasonably priced car versus the pros and how they do things. And I am far from being a pro. And that one dude, Ryan, has a whiskey big board. So I wasn't really intending to rip off of him. I have no way to prove it, but I definitely had this idea long before I even knew that one dude, Ryan, existed. And it's definitely a rip off of Top Gear. So I am shamelessly ripping this off. It's a new concept for me because I wanna be more intentional about this big board and how it leads into other things throughout the year and then how it maybe affects my top 10 list. So we're gonna do a short intro on how that's going to all occur and then I'm going to give you a review of Old Forester 1924 that is dropping in Pennsylvania as we speak. The, the first kind of thing is the rules in which I'm going to use definitely set this as something that I want to do in the most scientific way that I think I can. We're gonna have a little bit of attention to detail. We're gonna do some things that I did a long time ago when I was writing down reviews. So step one is I'm going to prep the bottle. It's gonna take three steps. First part of that is the, I want the bottle to be open a minimum of two weeks, I know the idea of a neck pour is hotly contested. I don't know that I necessarily believe the whiskey drastically changes, but I think especially when it is a fresh crack, there is that little top bit of airspace at the top, and that is full of evaporated alcohol and all kinds of nastiness until you actually open that bottle, and then it doesn't just necessarily leave. There's some of that residue at the top of the bottle. So I like to not necessarily trust my first review of it. I don't like to call it a neck pour because it's not physically the whiskey in that neck portion. And if you shake it, it doesn't do anything because that denatured alcohol is still up there. I have no scientific backing for any of this stuff. This is just from what I know of science. But once again, I'm not a scientist. No one so far has been able to refute me and I've put my opinion in very many places on the internet. So if you have something to refute that, I'm always interested in new evidence, drop that in the comments. And if you know more than me, then I am willing to change my opinion. We're doing one ounce of whiskey poured into a glass and that is going to rest for 10 minutes prior to tasting. That kind of lets the alcohol breathe a little bit, maybe lose some of that harshness and it allows for, I think a better nose if you're not pouring it straight out of the glass. And then finally, I'm going to set my palate. And step one for setting my palate is I'm going to be drinking the same thing for each one of these reviews in 2024. We'll probably change what the bottle is in 2025, but I wanted something that is decently cheap, is a lower proof, and is something that doesn't have a whole lot of bad or nasty flavors. And this Ancient Ancient Age fits the bill. It is not offensive. And if you've watched this channel in any way, shape, or form, you know that screw tops are drink straight from the bottle, so I don't have to dirty another Glen. Cheers. Fresh and grapey. So the thought behind that is I don't want these to be the first thing that I've drank all day, but I also don't want to have a whole lot of other things in front of this. These will be the only reviews that I do of the day, or at the very least the first. I do batch content. That shouldn't be much of a secret here. If it doesn't taste right, I won't do the review. And then finally, I think one of the things that people overlook is that I'm not going to have any big flavorful spicy food or drink more than an hour before this tasting. So I haven't had anything for several hours. And then just a little short final step, we're gonna cleanse with some water before we get to the tasting. So here we go. The tasting itself is going to go in kind of two phases for three different elements. So there's the nosing portion and the tasting portion. For the nosing portion, we're gonna take two minutes. I'm gonna do some cuts, so it won't be exactly two minutes on video here, but I'm going to take two solid minutes. I'm going to nose 1924 or whatever whiskey I'm tasting in many different ways. I'm gonna give you tasting notes, and then I'm going to score it a one through five. So I have written down in front of me, I know it's poor, etiquette to read directly, but I'm gonna do it anyway. So I have carefully worded my descriptions to kind of give you an insight into what I'm looking for on the nose so you can get maybe a better understanding of where I'm coming from and what my ideal is. The definition of my ideal nose is it's a pleasant and interesting aromas 
with no obvious unpleasant scents. Proof or ethanol may be present as long as it's not overpowering or seemingly uncharacteristic of the proof. Five total points and points may be deducted for whiskeys that are unbalanced, have alcohol vapors, uninteresting or dull aromas, or unpleasant notes. With that being said, I'm gonna take two minutes. I'm going to nose this whiskey, and then we're gonna give it a score one through five and tell you why. Here goes. All right, so immediately it's a lot of caramel, it's a lot of cherry, oak, some brown sugar, maybe just like a light little bit of like honeysuckle, herbal, kind of nest going on, maybe a little spearmint, something like that. There's not a whole lot of ethanol in the nose, but there is a little bit present. It's not burning my nostrils. It is a hundred proof, so it shouldn't be too spicy, but there will be some there. That last little sniff had a little bit of apples, a little bit of like fruity notes, loads of oak. And I'm not talking like, like over oaked here, but it's definitely present in a little bit of honey maybe like a little pastry, like a honey bun kind of thing. A little bit of cake icing, like vanilla, sweetness, some sugar. You do kind of need to get into the glass a little bit to get the aromas. Out a little bit, it's much more vanilla, cake icing, uh, cherry kind of thing. It definitely does not have anything unpleasant. It's not overly proofy. It is interesting. I would definitely categorize this as interesting. A few small notes and it is very distinctive. It lacks a little depth. It's a little understated, but it's not bad or unpleasant. I think I'm going to go with a four on the nose here. I think it's just lacking a little bit of something. It's good, but not great. For the next portion, we are going to do the actual tasting. We're going to drink the full ounce. We're going to judge it on palette and finish. A total possible 15 points, five for nose, five for palette, five for finish. So I wanted to kind of read to you what my description of the ideal palette is. It is interesting and pleasant, well-balanced taste with no unpleasant or out of place flavors. Whiskey with big, bold, and distinctive, pleasing notes balanced out by contrasting flavors are generally among my favorites. And then my ideal finish is lingering and flavorful with well-balanced heat and a thick coating consistency. Best scoring whiskeys tend to have very consistent notes throughout nose, palate, and finish. We're gonna taste it. We're gonna give palate a one through five and finish a one through five. So here goes, cheers. Uh, very honey forward like honey and oak on the first sip, maybe a little butterscotch. It definitely starts sweet and then ends up oaky. That's kind of what I'm looking for as far as balance goes. Has a little bit of heat. It's definitely uh, on the finish, it's oaky, and then it kind of gives way to that honey flavor. It's kind of tingling the back of my throat. Wouldn't call it a Kentucky hug because it's not really going, going down here, but it's kind of just, kind of just hanging out at the back of my throat. I'm sure there's a joke in there somewhere. A little bit more cherry coming through. I've got Really, that oak is there. It's got kind of a dark chocolatey vibe to it. Like, it's got some of those, like, almost dry astringency of dark chocolate, but it's not too much so. It's not like a, like a Chardonnay wine or like a Pinot Noir that's really, like, sucking all the moisture out of your mouth. It's got some complexity to that, and actually the finish now is very much on that chocolate note. This is kind of rounding out to almost chocolate-covered cherries. The consistency is nice and thick. I wouldn't say that it's extremely coating but it is there like it is not thin the flavors do not leave you right away it's definitely lingering on the finish it's it's riding that dark chocolate train almost like a little bit of citrus too maybe like a dark chocolate covered orange so the glass is finished it's got nice long legs it has a great deep color i don't know if you can really see how deep the color is on my glass it feels rich it feels like it's got a lot of those like high quality notes to it. So we're gonna go taste, we're gonna go palate first. I think on the palate, it's a little simplistic, like there's not a whole lot of flavors, but the ones that are, are deep. It, I feel like has a flavor above 100 proof. I think it probably drinks like it's something in the 107. I just recently had Jack Daniels 12, which is 107 proof. And I think this probably drinks closer to where that is than a 100. For palate, I'm gonna give it a four, I'm gonna go four and a half. I think this is very good. I would maybe like to see a little bit more flavors. I'd like to see a little bit more of that oak balanced out. It definitely leans more towards the oak. If that's what you're looking for, this is going to be perfect for you. As far as finish goes, I think that the finish is also a four and a half. I think maybe I would like 
some lingering, maybe uh, some of those fruity notes. Some of the, the fruit doesn't necessarily transfer onto the palate. It's just hints and whispers. And I think the finish is long. It's got a thick consistency. So consistency is something that I'm going to score on the finish. So we're going to go with a four and a half. So to summarize, I think this is a great bottle. I think definitely if you are looking for a lot of oak and don't like those drier, oakier notes, the astringency, kind of that like red wine, sucking all the moisture out of your mouth kind of thing, that is not present here. It just is a big, dark chocolate, cherry, bold flavors. While they are not necessarily a lot, I think this is a little simplistic. I do think it is a good pour. As we get more into doing these reviews, I think this is going to end up on the upper end of the scale. A comparison for this bottle that is possibly easier to find. I think this is a lot like Calumet, either the 15 or the 16, I think. I think they give you a very similar flavor profile and a lot of that oak and that chocolate without being over oak. They are a lot more simplistic to me and they're actually a lot more expensive. So this being a little bit younger, it has a very similar flavor for less money. If you like Calumet 16 or if you like Calumet 15, this is gonna be a lot like that. Finally, we're going to talk value and I don't want that to be a part of my score. I've gotten into numerous arguments with buddies of mine in the Gentleman of Whiskey Tasting Group. I think flavor needs to be separate from value because this is the, we're, we're rating the whiskey and then I think the context of it is where I value this. It's $115 here in Pennsylvania. I'm sticking strictly to MSRP because I firmly believe that if you are not paying MSRP, you are overpaying. I know we talked about this a little bit in the uh, whiskeys I'm willing to overpay for video. I have had this whiskey value calculator back when I was writing reviews on Reddit. I kind of had this idea for a calculator, which I made out of a simple Google sheet. This sliding scale that is plus or minus 50%. So if I'm looking at it, I put the MSRP in and then the scale basically goes a one to 10, five being I like it exactly at MSRP, meaning it is a properly valued whiskey. One is I would not pay more than 50% less than MSRP. And a 10 is I would be willing to overpay by 50%. In this case, the whiskey value, the bought price is $115. One would be $69. A 10 would be $172. As far as value, I think it's tough because I think somewhere in the $100 range is more likely what I would want to pay for this. Minus 10% is a 103.50 and then minus 20% is 92. So I'm going to have the distance there and I'm going to give it a 3.5 on value. I think it should be somewhere around $100 and that's where it sits on my scales. Finally, we are going to put this on our big board. So we gave it a four. Where did I put my Sharpie? There's my Sharpie. Okay. So we gave it a four for nose. We gave it a four and a half for palette and a four and a half for our finish. So that is a total of 13 points out of a possible 15 points. And we have nothing on our big board so far. So that just goes right there at the top. I really enjoy it. I think that if you're on the fence and you like big, bold whiskey flavors and you are fine with a whiskey being a little simplistic, then this is gonna be for you. It's got loads of oak and it's not astringent and I think that's probably the biggest compliment that I can give it. If you are on the fence, it's worth purchasing. It is a little overvalued even at MSRP, but it should seemingly be pretty available here in Pennsylvania in the coming days. I know it just started dropping on Wednesday. It is now Thursday when this video drops. If you wanna see the short that I did for it. I believe it is a first impressions and I will link it up here. Honestly, not sure what I gave it. So if you want to see that, you'll be just as surprised by the ending as I am. If you like this new format, if you have any critiques on how I do things, definitely drop those in the comments. If you have ideas for content in the future, drop those in the comments. The video that I dropped on Tuesday was a community submission. If you like this content, check out our other videos. Please like and comment on this video and subscribe if you haven't already. It helps us out a ton. And we hope you'll join us in drinking like a gentleman. Cheers. Cheers.